maybe we call mini skeins cupcakes instead of cakes. I'm having a love affair with blue and I am, I'm turning to purple and pink. This see, this is why I'm doing this video, just to see that I have things that look good together. Oh, mm, I don't know, has to all work together if you buy enough of it. Hello and welcome to the Knitting Page channel. My name is Paige and I'll be your host for today. So today I have an exciting video to film. This is not a traditional podcast. This is the first video in my stash tour. And so this idea kind of sparked from Inga from the Knitting Traditions and also from the Wooly Worker and her recent upload on about Ravelry. Um, I think that sometimes it can be easy to get carried away and forget about yarn that you have in your stash. I haven't been the best at keeping all my yarn in one place and so sometimes I forget that I have a yarn or just anyways I want to go through it and I also want to get better at documenting my yarn on Ravelry. I do think that the Ravelry feature of it like suggesting a yarn in your stash to use when you're looking at projects is really useful but of course it can only do that if your stash is uploaded so today's video is going to be all about sock yarn and for this series I'm not 100% sure how many videos there will be um I'm just debating about I know I have a lot of fingering and whether or not I should group it by summer fibers and wools within each yarn weight, but I figured socks was an easy place to start. Um, and so let's get started. Also, before I start showing you my yarn, I am wearing the Novice Cardigan, which is a pattern by Petite Knit. And I knit this in Drops Melody in their hot pink color. And you know, it is still summer of POP, so I figured I'd wear it. And I actually hadn't finished this until a couple days ago. And I had finished all the knitting, I'd woven in the ends, but I didn't attach buttons until a couple days ago. <laughs> so it's only recently been like 100% finished. And I I really love the, the cute little buttons that I got. Um, I'll come closer. They're just these cute little pink buttons with a cute little floral design on them. I got them from Fabricland and I'm very happy with it. I wasn't loving the fit of this cardigan prior to adding the buttons. Um, I knit this totally off gauge from what the pattern calls for. And so before I had the buttons, my yoke would always slip off my shoulders when I wore it. And so now that I have the buttons, I think it just, yeah, it's super nice. It stays on my body. Obviously it is kind of that scoop neck um, because it is very large. Um, if you're wondering, I did knit this. I knit the size extra small and I don't remember what size needles I used because I didn't really take notes. But I want to say I knit the size small at like a five or a six millimeter gauge. Whatever the gauge or the suggested needle size that's on the Drops Melody tag I think is what I used and then I just followed the the stitch counts and the pattern for size extra small in the Novice Cardigan Mohair Edition. Um, I didn't want to purchase the Novice Cardigan Chunky Edition as well so I just knit it off gauge and overall I'm quite happy with the fit. I also didn't do a tubular bind off I just cast off in pattern and so it is a little tight but it's it still goes over my hands so I'm pleased with it it's super cozy um and I think now that I've added the buttons it'll get a lot more wear I kind of like it it's a top like I'm wearing right now so also it is a thunderstorm outside so if you hear some thunder I'm sorry <laughs> I was about to go for a run with my dog Luna in the back corner but it started to thunder and I don't mind running in the rain but I don't think it's safe to run in a thunderstorm so I was like we're just gonna wait it out and what a perfect opportunity to film this stash video so again lighting not 100% natural lighting have my lamp focused on me but let's get to it let's look at some sock yarn <sighs> all of my sock yarn in this basket that I thrifted at Valley Village I am going to start out with this beautiful skein. And so this is a yarn from Songbird Yarn and Fibers, and it is in the colorway Barn Owl. I was 
immediately obsessed with songbird yarn and fibers from when High Fiber Knits posted about particularly her blue jay colorway that she knit a pair of socks for her dad in. And <laughs> I was immediately drawn to it because my boyfriend's mom is obsessed with birds. Like she always goes bird watching. She loves to take photos. She loves to take photos of birds. And I was like, oh, I bet you she would just love one of these yarns. Um, and so, you know, I looked at the Songbird website and we were going to order some, but we never really got around to it. And then my local yarn shop here in Kingston, Purling Jays, and they do a yarn of the month every month where they bring in different local dyers from different places around Ontario. And so I think in April they had Songbird Fibers as their yarn of the month. And so of course I had to get some and my boyfriend's mom loves owls and Songbird Fibers did come out with an owl line and so I got the barn owl one because she's been wanting to see a barn owl for a very long time and they are an endangered species here in Canada but actually one of the islands close to Kingston, uh, Amherst Island, is apparently a place to see um, a place to see barn owls and so anyways I got this yarn I think I will knit her a pair of socks with it but not a hundred percent sure I knit her some fingerless mitts a while back I could also see myself knitting her like a cowl but she is a bit sensitive to wool um, so anyways I'm not a hundred percent sure what I'm gonna knit her with it but I just thought I had to get it while it was at the local yarn shop and yeah it's just it's fun it's I'm really excited to see how it knits up because like the blue jay colorway knit up to look like a blue jay wing and I was just astonished by it so these yarns are amazing they're wonderful and <laughs> I got this for my boyfriend's mom but I also couldn't just not get one for myself and so this is the colorway that I got. And so this is the Great Blue Heron. Again, it is uh, dyed by Songbird Fibers. And I, as I've mentioned before, and I will continue to mention, I really love blue. And so this colorway immediately stuck out to me because of the blue. One of my friends from my undergrad's name is Heron and I just think that herons are absolutely beautiful. I love their long beaks and their long legs and they're just, yeah, gorgeous. And of course the blue with this like brown kind of drew me in. So I'm not sure. I think I'll probably just do a vanilla sock to really let this pattern and colorway shine. But I did, I've been really loving contrast cuffs, heels and toes. And so maybe pulling out this brown or there is some purple and as you'll see I have some purple in stash that might look really cute or doing a white or a blue I don't know but I want to do contrast heel cuffs and toes and I want to try the fish kiss heel or whatever that one is called you know the one I'm talking about because that one doesn't interrupt your colors like you're knitting in the round where like a heel flapping gusset or a short row heel they will have more stitches after you pick up for the heel than the fish slip kiss heel or whatever that one is called and so you can get it some odd color pooling where I figured if I tried the the fish heel I don't know <laughs> I can know what I'm talking about if I tried the fish heel that it would be really nice to allow this to just not have any interruptions um so yeah I I could see myself casting these ones on this fall I don't know when but I just I had to get it while it was while it was at my local yarn store so two skeins in okay the next sock yarn that I'll show you is this Noro sock yarn and this is the silk garden sock yarn and this is in the color s279 has anyone actually like, please let me know if anyone has knit socks in these Noro yarns. I am, so this is a, oh, I should also mention, both of these are 20% Superwash Merino and, oh, sorry, 80% Superwash Merino and 20% Nylon. 
this silk garden sock yarn is 40% wool, 25% silk, 25% polyamide, and 10% mohair. So I guess this one does have a lot of animal fibers besides the silk, but this is a DK weight sock yarn. It has 300 meters per 100 grams. And the color of this one, you can kind of see into the core, but it's got some purple, some like greeny, olivey browns, some auburny color here. And then inside you can see a bit of teal and yellow. But has anyone knit a pair of socks in this yarn? I am so curious about it. Um, but I got this yarn from the local yarn shop in Thunder Bay that has since closed and it's called Olives and Bananas. And <laughs> my mom actually picked this up for me. We were FaceTiming and cause they had like a huge, huge clearance sale, um, which as you'll see throughout my stash tour videos that a lot of my yarns came from this clearance table. And so I believe my mom got this at $5. And I don't know, it's a very fall color scheme. I think it could make a very nice pair of like cozy house socks, maybe boot socks. I don't know, it could look cute pulling out of blundstones. I have dark brown blundstones, but I am definitely curious about Noro sock yarns and how, how durable they are and how well they stay up. But the color is gorgeous. Um, yeah, so very intrigued to see how this will knit up. Okay, my next yarn is my rec most recent sock yarn acquisition. And this is Heritage Sock Yarn by Cascade Fibers or Cascade Yarns. And I got this from my local yarn shop Purling Jays during their Christmas in July sale. It is in the colorway 5752. And this yarn is, why can't I see the comp? Oh, here it is. 25% superwash and oh my gosh, I keep doing that. 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon. And this is a yarn that I got to gift socks for, for my best friend Haley, because her favorite color is yellow and they're gonna be the Hummel Bay socks but they're not getting cast on immediately. But super cute little yellow yarn. I, as I mentioned in my last video, plan to have these done for our graduation in November. Okay, the next yarn I have is a yarn from Romani Wools. And this is, they just say sock yarn. And it is again, 75% superwash merino, or it just says superwash wool actually. 25% nylon. I paid $7.96 for this yarn and as you can see there's a lot of marled browns and neutrals in here so some marled blacks, auburny browns, light browns, beiges, more of a yellowy brown, dark brown and so I got this yarn. <laughs> I thought it could look cute for me but I also got it as like a nice gift yarn for any men or more masculine people in my life just because as much as I love fun bright colors, I know like my dad would probably wear a pair of these or my boyfriend. Um, but yeah, I got this when my boyfriend and I were in Toronto to, he was running the marathon at the Tata Waterfront Marathon and, or the Toronto Waterfront Marathon. And I was racing in the 5K, which it was my first time getting an elite bib for the 5K. So that was pretty exciting. I was sick leading up to it. I didn't run super great. He was also sick leading up to it. He didn't run super great, but we got to stay with my friend in Toronto. We got to go to a whole bunch of different yarn shops. It was a lot of fun, but this is one, I think this was the only yarn acquisition that I got from Romney Wools, but they have a great clearance section in their basement. If you're ever in Toronto and you want some cheap yarn, I highly suggest checking out Romney Wools and going to their basement. They also carry a lot of um, great yarns like Briggs and Little and things like that. So this is chocolate cake. Yeah, this is in the colorway chocolate. Just a nice dark brown color. I believe this yarn was, is by Riverside Studios. I no longer have the yarn ball tag, but I believe it's by Riverside. Uh, I believe it's by Riverside Studios, which is a dyer from Ottawa. 
and I also got this at Pearling J's and this yarn excuse you Luna <laughs> um this yarn was also on sale I believe it was $20 and since I don't have the yarn tag I don't know what the composition of it is but you know it's definitely like an 80 20 uh superwash merino and nylon or 75 like somewhere around that I don't believe it has any cashmere in it but I actually got this the same time I got this oh this was on the local yarn store sale day local yarn store sale day or support your local yarn store day and I thought that this could be super cute for having contrast toes heels and cuffs um as well as I have some other browns that I also got that day that I figured this could be a great contrast to as well as just knitting up a cute pair of solid brown socks um for myself and then using the leftovers for some contrasting parts of a sock so I I honestly am tempted to cast on sorry Nordland's August sock which is like that adorable cute little ruffle sock I don't know the exact name of the pattern off the top of my head but I'll put it here and I feel like it would just be super cute I thrifted these like adorable loafers from Steve Madden for six dollars from Valley Village and I thought the ruffle sock with those loafers in this brown color would just be so cute with like I have like a brown midi skirt and I'm planning to knit the knotted dress in a brown and so I just feel like that could all be such a cute little look so I think that's what I might do these might be in August cast on but we'll see but yeah I think ruffle socks and then using the leftovers for contrast cuffs toes and heels would be super fun for this chocolate yeah okay <laughs> this is also a yarn from purling jays and this is from the local dyer here in Kingston called All Dyed Up with an exclamation mark. All Dyed Up! And this is in the colorway Tinkerbell. I've definitely talked about this yarn in a previous podcast and I included it here. It's not a full skein or a full cake um, because I knit a Sophie scarf for my mom for Mother's Day in this color which I really love and I think I talked about it in my summer knitting plans video about knitting a bralette with it or a bra and I still think I might knit one of the naked bras in this colorway I just think it would be super cute there is some cashmere in this one this is a cashmere blend I believe it's 70 percent 70 percent superwash or 80 percent superwash 10 percent cashmere and 10 percent nylon I believe is 80 10 10 this really cute greeny bluey there's some grello in there with some orange speckles and some blue speckles and I think it will just knit a super cute little bralette and because of the cashmere I think it will be super nice and if I have leftovers I really want to start an excavation blanket so that is definitely a plan for the near future okay <laughs> this is this gorgeous like oceany blue that I am also forgetting the name of because this yarn I bought from Etsy from a local dyer or not local but a Canadian dyer from the west coast. I will put the name down here and the composition down here but I don't know I in like April slash May I was on like a sock buying kick because I thought I would be knitting more socks than I have been knitting but Again, here's the blue. I love blue and I think these will knit such a cute sock. I also feel like these would knit, make up like a super cute ruffle sock by Sorry, Sorry Nordland. So I definitely want to buy that pattern and knit up a couple pairs of ruffle socks. Again, super cute with loafers and this just some nice tonal variation. I don't, I think it will be nice to like a, the ruffle sock will be nice because it'll have it's all stockinette to show off some of that tonal variety but it also won't like I feel like the yarn will not be too much in a ruffle sock um and then again having leftovers for either contrasting heels toes and cuffs or throwing it into an excavation blanket that I would like to start soon loving the blue Part of me is like, should I turn this into a camisole? But I already have a booth camisole out of a sock yarn. And I also, as you'll see in like my fingering weight video, whether it's fingering plant fibers versus fingering uh, animal fibers, whatever, I have so many 
camisole quantities. So I think this can be a cute pair of socks. Okay, next up. This is the normal yarn that I'm most curious about. And again, my mom got this for me from the local yarn store in Thunder Bay. This is the Tayo sock yarn. And it is 50% cotton, 17% wool, 17% nylon, and 16% silk. So I am so, so curious if any of you have used this yarn because to me, it just doesn't seem like a sock yarn. Um, this is a fingering weight yarn. It is 100 grams for 420 meters. There is so much going on, like most normal yarns, you know. I feel like every color in the rainbow is in here. There's some light purple, some uh, like some pinky colors, some more like lilac-y blues. There's bright blue, there's green, there's like a neon yellow, there's brown. So part of me is tempted to turn this into a June top because I feel like the June top would allow all the stripes to have their moment and I just don't know how I feel about a cotton sock. But again, I am so curious to know if you have knit a yarn or a yarn, if you've knit a sock in this yarn or in like any cotton yarn, I've been kind of, you know, pulling away. From, I don't, I just, yeah. Haven't been wanting to knit a sock in cotton yarn because of the lack of memory with cotton. But if you have, and you have a positive experience or a negative experience, let me know. But I think this could be a cute June top. And I already own the pattern because I was gonna knit a silk knitting for all of pure silk top but I twisted the stitches three times and so I'm mad at that yarn <laughs> and that pattern so it is it has been frogged and it has not been started again but yeah I feel like this could knit up a cute June top and it'd be a nice way to highlight the fun colors I don't know if I'd actually wear it but I guess I'll have to see if I knit it up but that's kind of an idea that I have. Anyways, let me know if you've used this yarn. I am so curious. And I, I got this at um, Olives and Bananas. Again, it was like $5. So if I can get a camisole out of it, $5 for a camisole, like you can't even thrift at that price. So obviously there'd be like hours and hours and hours of work getting put into it. But yeah, the green's fun. I don't know. My mom picked it out. I don't think she looked inside to see all the different craziness going on. Okay, also from my local yarn store, Purling Jays, I got these minis from Lily and Pine at the like local yarn day sale. They were 50% off and I thought they were so cute. Any guesses to what these colors are inspired by? I don't know, let me see if I can hold it this way. Okay, that was enough time to allow you to guess, but they're inspired by ice cream flavors. Like, oh, so cute. So I believe this is chocolate because it's the only brown one or the most brown one. My guess is this one is vanilla. This green is pistachio. I believe it was pistachio and not mint. The pink is strawberry. I believe this one is maple walnut. And this one with the little, it's like, White with some like fun colored speckles. I feel like that's birthday cake. And anyways, these are 20 gram singles. 25 gram singles, I believe. Because I also, the next one is also from Lillian Pine. That I also got that day for on sale. Ah! So I, I caked up one because I was just curious to know how a mini scheme cakes up. And it's just these like, I don't know, maybe they're... Maybe we call mini skeins cupcakes instead of cakes. Just a cute little chocolate cupcake. But again, I thought these could look cute together. I thought these could all be cute little contrast heels and toes. I don't think I will knit them all in one sock. I don't really think that's my vibe. And that's also a lot of ends to weave in, which I don't love to do. I don't know. I thought they were super cute. And a lot of them are relatively neutral. So figured I could play around with them. Yeah, so those are my little ice cream minis. So adorable. Okay, well, since I already pulled it out, why not? This is Lillian Pine as well. And I also got this at the local yarn store sale or local yarn store day sale. You know the day I'm talking about? Yeah. 
and this is an 80-20 superwash merino in nylon and this is in the color pack winter wonderland so again you know me i love blues so i was drawn to the blue and i really do like this like light pearly gray color do i think i will use them in the same sock i don't know i kind of want to pull there's like some darker blue speckles in here as well as some neon greens. And I feel like doing like a dark blue would be more my speed and then saving this little pearly guy to do with a different sock, but very fun. It was also on sale for a good price and I thought it was super cute. And I haven't actually knit with a speckled hand dyed yarn before. So I liked the blue with the green speckles, super fun. And I don't know, my, my birthday is in the winter and so I have I don't know I like winter icy scenes Elsa Elsa these could be my Elsa socks um from Frozen you know blonde hair and winter and obsessed with Scandinavia could work could work but it's beautiful yarn also at any point if you're like if you're still watching and you have a favorite sock pattern please please let me know in the comments because I that's how I found out about the Hummel Bay socks was from watching another podcaster talk about it. Um, and so I just, yeah, always curious to find out about different patterns and there's just so many wonderful sock patterns. And I do feel like this one could be a fun textured sock um, with like cables or something like that. So yeah, let me know what your favorite sock patterns are or if you have any suggestions. This is a sock yarn. This is also from All Dyed Up Fibers. And I 100% forget what this colorway is called but this is a sock I've already knit a pair of socks out of this one with um stripes for my associate teacher for a thank you gift but I, I there's over half a skein left so I definitely could get another sock out of it especially if I do some contrast heels toes and cuffs um but this is by all dyed up fibers I'm so sorry I'm forgetting the name I also don't know if I have the tag so for now, it is this mystery burgundy yarn. And this is not in their cashmere base. This is in their just 80-20 superwash merino nylon blend. But yeah, that's part of my stash. Again, this could make such a cute little textured pair. Uh, there is some slight variation in it. Where you get some lighter and darker hues of burgundy, but a very fun yarn. Um, yeah. Okay, this is a yarn that I also purchased from Purling Jays, and this is in the colorway Pumpkin Spice, and this is by Happy Cat Designs, I believe. And so there's a lot going on in this yarn. It is very Pumpkin Spice fall-esque, and so this will definitely be a pair of socks that I would like to knit this fall again I it's like variegated and speckly like there's just a lot going on so I feel like I can't do a crazy sock I don't know maybe the ruffle sock would be cute in these as well there are some like dark colors like some dark black or brown speckles in it that could look cute with those loafers that I keep talking about um but a she happy cat is a local dyer in Kingston who actually she works at one of the local thrift stores and I was in there one day and she was like the knitting page is that you and I was like oh my gosh I feel famous so yeah she's awesome and makes beautiful yarn and I believe this has cashmere in it too it's like an 80 10 10 blend so a fun yarn let me know if you have a yarn that I mean, it's not totally crazy. All the colors are, you know, they're all warm fall colors. So it's not like it's like variegated rainbow, but yeah, if you have any ideas for specific yarns, I just love the pumpkin spice. Again, there's some yellow in there, super cute. And I just, this was their, I believe it was their first yarn of the month. So very fun. Okay, I have one skein of Lang Yarns Jowl. Again, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but it's superwash, 25% superwash, 25% merino. I hope I said 75% superwash, 25% merino. And 
This is in the colorway 21102, I think. I was bad and I didn't I didn't look at how many grams are in this. This is only a 50 gram skein. And so I actually bought it to hold with this yarn, which is greatly admired by all dyed up fibers in their cashmere sock base and four contrast toes, cuffs and heels, which I think would look super cute. But there's definitely going to be a lot of this left over, which actually I have this yarn as well. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. Maybe not. Maybe not a silly move on my part. So again, 25 or 25 grams, 50 grams of this beautiful like lilac, dusty lilac color, which apparently I'm having a thing for. I'm having a love affair with blue and I am, I'm turning to purple and pink. I'm, yeah, just knitting all the colors. Um, <laughs> but I feel like, okay, so this is from Hutopia, which is a Canadian dyer based out of Alberta, I believe. And it's in this like gorgeous lilac -y color with some, there's like some dark purples. Let me hide my face. There's some dark purples and some like lighter gray purples. And I feel like this could be a nice contrast to hold with it, as well as a bit more of a sharp contrast to hold with this greatly admired cashmere one that I got to knit a Sophie scarf for my friend. Um, but I feel like both, all of these could, like this goes with both of them very, very well. Oh, that's so happy. This see, this is why I'm doing this video, just to see that I have things that look good together. Um, but I feel like this yarn, this yarn's quite high contrast in its variegation. So I feel like either a ribbed sock or stockinette sock or like something quite simple would look the best. But I feel like with this one, I can get a bit more experimental in what pattern I do and the amount of texture that I have because it's lower contrast for the different purples in here. But it's just absolutely beautiful. I got this, she was having like a spring sale and so it was 40% off. This yarn I got from La Bobonaise. I purchased it when I ordered a cone of Holskarn Coast, I believe, just to get me to the free shipping level. Um, but yeah, it works with two different yarns I have in stash, which makes me very, very happy. Again, I feel like this could make a cute pair of ruffle socks, but apparently I'm just obsessed with those ruffle socks. So mm, I don't know, but yeah, that's my, my purple yarn, purple sock yarn. Oh, this one is also just a 80-20 base. Okay, I will show both these at once, but these are Drops Nord. I got them last year during their alpaca sale. I bought them to knit my boyfriend these socks and obviously I have not knit these socks yet but I also I think I have four balls of the green and two balls of the gray because I want to knit myself a pair as well I don't know the little tree motif I thought was super cute but I'm not the biggest fan of drops patterns and so I've been hesitant to cast them on just because I I would rather purchase a sock pattern by a designer with a similar motif. I knit a pair of socks already using a free drops pattern in Drops Nord and I do, it's like, it's an alpaca wool blend. Um, oh, here it is. It's 45% alpaca, 30% polyamide, and 25% wool. So if you know of like a cute little tree motif sock pattern, please let me know. Um, yeah, my boyfriend keeps asking for them and maybe I should just suck it up and knit the one drops pattern and then save these other yarns uh, for myself. I could definitely get a pair of socks for myself out of the leftovers from knitting him the pair of the gray with, cause I'll have a full skein and the other socks I made, I just dipped into like, they're like 55 grams and these balls are each 50 grams. So, hey, okay, we're getting close. We are getting close. I've got some Modine. No, Mondine. There's an N in there. And it's in this like speckly, tweedy. I mean, it's not actually tweedy, but that's what it kind of reminds me of. Pattern. Uh, this is in the colorway 209. And Mondine is in 100% wool sock yarn. So there's no nylon or any synthetic fiber in here. And... I've heard mixed feelings about using Mondeem, but 
I was very intrigued to try it. So on that same trip when my boyfriend and I went to Toronto to go run the races, I stopped by Unit, which was really close to the friend's house that we were staying at. And I got a ball of Mondim. And I mean, it's great bang for your buck. Part of me thought about doing cute little socks, but another part of me also thinks that a cute camisole could be made out of this yarn because I've heard mixed reviews or feelings about using Mondim as a sock yarn. Um, so I'm tempted to not even bother trying it as a sock yarn and knit it as a camisole but I don't know it could be maybe holding it with like a mohair and doing some cozy house socks could be really nice but yeah again I don't know it kind of reminds me of like oreo cookies oh which my parents just adopted a new cat and it's named oreo so maybe I could knit like a pair of cute slipper socks for my mom or my dad, but my dad has slippers that he's obsessed with, but that could be really cute. Little Oreo socks for my mom. I don't know. Okay. So now new request. If you have a cute little mohair slipper house sock, um, pattern that you rely on, please let me know. Yeah. Cause I feel like if I hold it with mohair, it'll just make it a bit more durable. Hopefully my mom's feet aren't too sensitive, but yeah. Or I can knit myself Oreo socks, but I do like the colorway. I think it's fun. I like the speckles, um, but yeah, just not 100% sure if I do want to use this yarn for socks or use it for another purpose. This is also Pearling Jays all dyed up, and this is in the color of Pearling Jays. Um, it's yellow, red, with some navy flecks in it, and I knit a Sophie scarf out of this. Um, and then I started knitting a camisole out of it, but I didn't like the way that the color was pooling, so I frogged it all. I The Sophie scarf I love for, like I've worn it to class and there's a primary color, so when I'm teaching a primary class, I think they're super cute, but next year I'm teaching high school and I don't see this fitting in my wardrobe super well. So it is in their cashmere base as well, so an 80-10-10, I believe, and it's fun. It kind of reminds me of like popcorn in the movies, the red and the yellow. Definitely not going to deck camisole with this one, but maybe a pair of socks, maybe a pair of mitts for like a little kid or something. I don't have any little kids in my life though. So I graduated from Queens and so like yellow, red, and blue are the Queens colors. So I thought this was kind of appropriate for that. So I guess I could knit a pair of socks out of it and like think of them as my queen socks because I did buy them while I was living in Kingston and attending Queens for my Bachelor of Education. Oh, but it could look cute with some contrast toes, heels, and cuffs with this yellow. So thank you, Paige, for buying random yarn and having it all work together. I guess it has to all work together if you buy enough of it. So I ordered some Sisu. And I ordered this yarn from Wet coast wools which is a yarn shop based out of vancouver and this is in the colorway gray mix and i got this yarn to make the sorry nordland summer series socks but i haven't finished the june sock and i haven't cast on the july sock but i am gonna knit the august sock because i do really love that and it is i don't know i just haven't been loving like crazy textured knits recently I've been doing a lot of knitting while also doing something else and so I like my knits to be very simple um but I got these to hold again I feel like they can make a super cute ruffle sock but I also bought this bamboo sock yarn which I talked about in one of my videos for my boyfriend and just like it's a self-patterning sock yarn that I got from Hand Knit Yarn Studio which is in Hamilton Ontario and I think this could make cute contrast toes cuffs and heels for it um which my boyfriend said that he liked so I'm gonna knit some of this, use some of this yarn to do the, the cuffs, toes, and heels, but obviously that's not gonna use up. I bought two balls of my Sisu, and so that's 100 grams, because each ball is 50 grams, so it's obviously not gonna get all used up doing contrast cuffs, toes, and heels. So maybe knitting 
uh, a pair of ruffle socks with them because I don't know I'm obsessed with ruffle socks and I want them all and apparently I want all of my socks to be ruffle socks but using that and then throwing the rest into like an excavation blanket so yeah but just like a nice gray I don't know sometimes I love the bright sock colors but sometimes I also just want like a nice neutral sock that will go with anything that I throw on but yeah Okay, and the last yarn that I have is Patton's Croy Sock. So it's in this nice burgundy ready color. It is color 303, and I thrifted six balls of these from Value Village, and it is 50 grams. There are 253 meters in one skein, and it is 85% wool and 15% nylon, and... I honestly don't know if I will use these for socks. I might use one and a bit of them for socks, but I think a lot of them I might end up getting a mohair to make a sweater or a cardigan. Um, this burgundy color is one of the school colors at the school I'll be teaching at next year, and so I thought it could be kind of nice to knit a garment in the school color just yeah to wear and you know wear it on school spirit days or whatever I don't know if they have those but we'll find out so yeah okay that's it that's all that is my sock collection I went through yeah all of my sock bins and I didn't realize how many sock yarns I have and a lot of them I do have patterns for again it's just finding the time to knit them and like my 2.5 millimeter needles are currently getting <laughs> They're currently occupied with Sorry Nordland June Sock, which is the Summer Solstice Sock, which is gorgeous, but it involves so much of my attention to remember because it's like a 32 row repeat pattern or something crazy like that. Absolutely gorgeous, literally stunning. And it's in this gorgeous watermelon pink, which is also a hand dyed yarn from Hutopia Fibers and... I know it matches my it matches my cardigan and I would love to finish these at some point but I I don't see myself really getting to it super soon I just haven't been drawn to doing cables especially on these little tiny needles um so these are like collage collage needles and they're actually square and I do really love them and there is if you're local in Kingston or from Canada, I don't know if they ship to the States, but um, Fiber and Fleece is a like yarn distributor. This woman in Kingston sells yarn and like uh, fleeces to spin your own yarn or felt with out of her house in Kingston. And she sells stuff for quite a cheap price. And there's right now there's like a summer sale going on. So anyways, these needles are like $5. So I might just pick up another pair to knit a couple socks with, but I'm also like, you could just finish these. I don't want to frog them because I do want to finish them like long term. I think they're gorgeous and like a work of art, but I really just want to knit simple things right now and not knit on something so complicated. So I'm also definitely going to knit them shorter than I or like make the cuffs shorter than they're written in the pattern because yeah, I like shorter socks. I don't like really tall socks and I don't want to do, I want to limit the amount of knitting that I have to do on them. I know it's bad, but yeah. So this, I guess is also in my stash. It's watermelon pink, gorgeous, matches my cardigan, but it, I don't know, this is, feels just like such a regal royal looking sock. I feel like these would be super cute in the, whatchamacallit, July sock with the tulips on them. But I need a, I need to finish one crazy intense sock pattern before I can knit another crazy intense sock pattern. But the ruffle socks, like, sorry, you're speaking to me. So yeah, those are my sock yarns. Thank you so much for tuning in and starting this series with me if you have any ideas of like whether you'd like to see yarns based on yarn weight or subdivided in yarn weight into summer and like 
winter fibers or summer and wools animal fibers let me know below um yeah it's super fun to sit down and film this it is since stopped raining so i get to go for my run yay and again if you are returning if you're a returning viewer thank you so so much and if you're still around and you are new I don't know you must like what you see so if you want to hit that subscribe button and hit the like and yeah it would mean a lot to me it's really exciting to watch this channel grow and yeah i've recently become monetized and it would be amazing <laughs> if youtube could help me pay off some of my student loans and if you subscribe and watch that really helps me out so thank you so much and till next time on my stash tour i'll see ya goodbye